What's up? It's Kyle Alaska. Make sure you tune in 8 p.m. to Real Fans, Real Talk with Rising 44 every Thursday. Shout out to Ladybug. Shout out to everybody. It's realtalk.com. Well, Arthur Diamond trip young and intern Tom for the white and black fans. Asia to Manhattan. I'll get all my facts from my bro, Mark. What's Chat. going on, everyone? It's Legend of Two Games, repping for Real Fans, Real Talk. If you're in the New York City area, make sure you're tuning in every Thursday night, 8 p.m., as we give you our breakdown on what's going on in the sports world and also give you our opinions on it. Um, exciting time for sports, man. For Final Four kicks off this weekend. NBA playoffs right around the corner. NFL draft about a week away. And then Major League Baseball is back this Thursday. And it's a very exciting time. All right. First things first, I got to give you my prediction on what's going on in the American League and what I expect to see. I'm not going to get into no World Series winners just yet. It's way too early for that. But I will tell you who I expect to win every division in the American League and my sleeper for the American League and the National League as well. So first thing first, the best team in all of baseball, the best team returning their whole squad from last year and adding another quality piece, it's the Houston Astros. And I know a lot of you guys are thinking the Yankees because of what they did with Giancarlo Stan. But hit me on for a second. The Houston Astros won the World Series last year. They've got the best middle infield in all of baseball. I think they've got the best lineup top to bottom. Not the most powerful, but the best lineup top to bottom. And then they already had a two-headed monster with Justin Verlander and Dallas Keuchel. This year, they actually get Justin Verlander for the whole year. And they add Garrett Cole from the Pittsburgh Pirates. So now they've got about... Uh, Three solid inning-eating pitchers who all can take the ball and who can all win a pivotal game for you. All of those guys are experienced with some with uh, some playoff uh, experience under their belt. I like the Houston Astros as the best team in the American League, but a very close second are those New York Yankees. I think the Yankees, what they did with Giancarlo Stanton, bringing him over now to this already powerful lineup, they were a team that led the American League in home runs last year. And then you add the National League MVP to that mix. They're the most powerful team in baseball. And like I said, the Astros have the best lineup top to bottom. But the Yankees have the most pop. And the Yankees have the most fearsome middle of a lineup when you consider Judge, Stanton, uh, Sanchez. You throw Bird in there. I mean, they really are stacked in the middle of that lineup. And they're going to be a tough out every at-bat whenever you've got to go up against those guys. So, I like what the Yankees did. My only concern for the Yankees and the only reason why I have the Astros ahead of them in the American League is I don't like the Yankees starting pitching. And on paper, it looks solid. Severino, Gray, Tanaka, CC Sabathia. It looks solid. But when you look at the numbers a little deeper, all of those guys struggled last year. Severino had a good year. Kept his ERA under three. Everyone else was three and a half plus in ERA. Also, those guys struggled to get deep in games. Sonny Gray was the only guy that approached 200 innings. The other three guys struggled to get to 200 innings, which means there was a lot of wear and tear on their bullpen. That's the only thing that concerns me about this team. I think every other aspect of this team is top notch. I do believe not only they're the second best team in the American League, they're the second best team in all of baseball. Uh, they won 91 games last year. I expect them to get over 100 wins this year. So I expect them to jump up by about 8 to 10 wins this season with just the addition of Stanton and the experience. Another year for these young guys. They're going to be very good. They will win the American League East. I have the Houston Astros winning the American League West. I have the Cleveland Indians, Indians winning the American League Central. They will win over 100 games. But the key with the Indians compared to the other two teams is the Indians play in a very weak division. Um, when you throw Kansas City in the mix, Detroit, Chicago, those are teams that the Indians are going to get fat on. And the Indians are going to beat up on those teams and run away with their divisions. Them winning 100 games does not put them on a level with the Astros and the Yankees, who I feel play in much tougher divisions. Uh, and then my two wild card teams, including the one team I expect to be a sleeper, will be Boston as the top wild card team. They add JD Martinez, but I'm not completely sold on their pitching either. David Price is coming back from an injury. Will he return to what he once was? And then also, uh, along with David Price, Chris Sale, who had a good first season, but both those guys struggled against the Yankees. And I don't see that changing this season. So therefore, Boston will be the second place team in the AL East, the number one wild card. The number two wild card in the team, I think they could make a little bit of noise. They, they're kind of on the uh, on the upswing is the Minnesota Twins. I like their roster, very young roster, but they've got some young pieces in Sano and Buxton who can carry that team. They don't have the pitching. They don't have the depth that the other teams that I mentioned have, but they will be the, the second wild card, I should say, just as they were last year. Again, the division is so weak. 
they are more than talented enough to win 80 plus ball games and be the the second wild card um, because they're going to get almost 60 games this season against Kansas City, Detroit and Chicago and all those teams are bums. So again, Yankees winning the AL East, Indians winning the Central, uh, Astros winning the West with the two wild cards going to Boston and Minnesota. Kind of looks like it did last year, but what are you going to do? The top teams in the in the American League got better. So, you know, what are you really going to do there? There's there's not much of a, a gap being closed out there. In the National League, it will be a little more competitive, but again, it's still very top-heavy. I think the Washington Nationals will win the National League East. Uh, the big question for them is going to be, is this the end of the road for that team? Because they're going to have to make some tough decisions uh, in the offseason after the season on Bryce Harper, who's in the last year of his deal, Gio Gonzalez, who's in the last year of his deal, and uh, Daniel Murphy, who's in the last year of his deal. So the Nationals find themselves in a situation where on paper, they are very talented, but it has not translated uh, to playoff success. They have not won a playoff series together yet. They also have a new manager coming in. So this could be a do or die situation for the Nationals if they cannot get over the hump and at least win a playoff series, we may see some major changes with the roster in uh, Washington. Uh, In the NL Central, I think the Cubs bounced back. They got into a rocky start last year and kind of suffered from a World Series hangover. I think they get themselves together this year and win the division. Plus, their division got a little weaker because Pittsburgh traded away their best player. The Reds are really bottom feeders and, and rebuilding at this point. So I see the Cubs running away with the NL Central. Out West, the Dodgers are still the best team out West, but the Dodgers face some of the same concerns that the Nationals face in that one, they have not had the success we expected them to have. They've had the best pitcher in baseball for quite some time, and they finally got over the hump of winning a playoff series and made it to the World Series last year only to lose to the Astros. So they find themselves in a similar situation that they may be at a crossroads with their roster and determining what they do long-term there. Um, I expect the Dodgers to win the division, But it will be interesting to watch Kershaw um, with his back. He had some back issues last year, and we got to see if it lingers into this season. So the Dodgers will win out West. Um, My two wildcard teams, uh, both not, I don't want to say sleepers. I'm going to put it more along the lines of just teams that I think will be better than they were last year. And I think that's the Colorado Rockies. They won 83 ball games last year. But I think another year of experience, their pitching staff is a little better. They've got a budding star in John Gray at the top of their rotation. Uh, they also added uh, Wade Davis, the closer who has been part of many successful ball clubs and won a World Series with the Royals. So I think that makes them a little better. And that's why I see them jumping over the Diamondbacks as the second team in the American League West, but also as a wild card team. The Diamondbacks, they lost... Um, uh, J.D. Martinez to the to the Red Sox, and then also Zach Greinke may start the season on the DL. So I think they'll get off to a little bit of a slow start. The Rockies will be the second best team out west. I'm not sold on the Giants. Bumgarner is out, and the Ross is very old. They've got names, but they're an old team, and I don't know how that's going to carry out throughout the season. I'm not confident in it carrying out. Uh, and the Padres are just bad over there, so nobody's even thinking about the Padres. Uh, and then my other wild card team. Some might say it's a sleeper. I don't really think it's a sleeper. I think it's just more about health, and it's the New York Mets. And you could call me a homo all you want. I'm a Mets fan, so what? But the facts are the facts. And the two years prior to last year when this team was healthy, they were a playoff team. They were a World Series contender. Last year, they struggled through injuries. The pitching staff was hurt all year. Cespedes was hurt most of the year. There was a lot of influx within the lineup. This team has coming out of spring training, the healthiest has been in probably about three seasons. And the fact that they've got Syndergaard and DeGrom starting the season healthy, they've got a really tough two-headed monster at the top of that rotation. The lineup, I think, is a little deeper this year. The main flaw for the Mets, though, is they are one-dimensional. They hit a lot of home runs. The same way the Yankees led the American League in home runs, the Mets led the National League in home runs. But the difference is the Mets don't do anything else. Their offense is really reliant on the long ball. So that's why it's important that they stay healthy. This is not a team that can manufacture runs, that gets guys on base, that plays hit and run baseball, bunts guys over steal bases. They don't do that. The Mets rely on the big inning. Base hit, base hit, three-run home run. Walk, base hit, double in the gap. Those are the things they rely on. They they rely on big innings, big scoring innings. So the Mets have to stay healthy. But I do think the fact that their pitching staff is as healthy as it's been in about three seasons 
will carry them, and I think they'll get off to a very hot start. Uh, Syndergaard and DeGrom again at the top of that rotation. Harvey looks slimmer than he did last season. Cespedes is healthy to start the season. They have Jay Bruce for the whole season. Todd Frazier, a guy, another veteran, winning veteran, who gets you, uh, again, more pop from your infield and third base spot, which is something they struggled with last year. I think the Mets are going to be better. I think the Mets actually could push the Nationals potentially for the division, but it's really going to be based off the, the start. If the Mets get off to a hot start, I think the Mets will win the National League East because I could see some trouble in D.C. As I mentioned, this is a very tough situation to be in because a lot of players in that locker room know that this could be their last season together. And with a new manager in place, are you willing to make the sacrifices to make this work this season or will it be a pressure situation that these guys crumble under um and they're also a team that has dealt with injuries in their rotation with Strasburg uh in the past so they've got to figure that part of it out for them as well but ultimately the Nationals will win the National League East the Mets will be the second place team and a wild card team in the National League the Cubs win the, the Central the Dodgers win the West and I think Colorado will be the second wild card team in the National League. Um, but again, it should be an exciting season. Hopefully, whatever team you're rooting for has a great season and, and potentially makes the playoffs. I know my team will. It may sound cocky, but I expect my team to be there. So I hope to see your team there as well. Again, Real Fans, Real Talk, Legend in Two Games. Tune in every Thursday night. RealTalk.com Where Arthur Domus, Trip Young, and Intern Tom For the white and black fans Asia to Manhattan I get all my facts from my bro Mark the stats